Welcome to this free breathe for world peace. We're so happy to have you with us and thank you for coming. I know it's uh, for a lot of people a very odd time, but this is the time that works for for all over the world, you know, so that's why we have it at this time. We're trying to make it the best for everybody. And I know that's not always the case, um, but thank you for coming and we thought about this breed because we're going to the Middle East next week. Uh, we're going to the Arabian countries, Qatar, Saudi Arabia, and UAE. And with all the strife that's going on in that part of the world now, we thought it would be a good idea to have a breathe together, a free breathe for world peace. So thank you all for coming. And uh, we know you all wanna give your energy to to that to peace in the world so a couple things um if you've never breathed before like done a rebirthing session or a breathwork session i just want to show you the simple way we do it so that you're well informed we breathe in the upper chest and when you breathe you breathe deeply it's consciously connected breathing in the upper chest. So you pull on the inhale and relax on the exhale. You just let go and you connect the inhale with the exhale with no pause. So you don't breathe in and then hold the breath. It's like, you wanna keep it circular and smooth and as deeply as you can breathe with without feeling uncomfortable. Now this is gonna bring up a lot of energy in your body. So don't freak out if it feels like your body is like getting electrified. Don't freak out if your hands get a little tight. That can be normal. It usually happens with people who are controllers, who are really controllers and they're afraid to let go. So that just, you know, breathe through that breathe through those feelings and just relax, keep breathing, keep relaxing. And usually that tightness will go out after a while. And if you have to slow down your breath, you may have to do that too. So that's the breathing in a nutshell. I think for new people who have never done it, you should do in and out through the nose. It's more gentle. And the other the rest of you can breathe how you want, but we recommend through the mouth. Yeah, okay. So yeah, that's the breathing part. Now the peace part, <laughs> that's, that's also our responsibility. You know, the name of this talk is Breathe for World Peace. And I like to think about what Krishnamurti, this wonderful teacher from the 20th century said about the world. He said, the, you are the world. So what's in you is what's out there in the world. So if you're seeing conflict in the world and you, you observe that, you have to also observe the conflict within yourself. And that's where you can make the change. It's not in external changes. It's not in saying, oh, this group was wrong and this group was right. No, anytime there's strife, or war or conflict and killing there are things off on both sides of the fence right so what we're trying to do is come to the inner harmony in ourself we're trying to come to the inner peace within ourself and undo any of those conflicts any of those judgments that we're projecting any of those well the course in miracles will call them grievances you know, grievances towards others, because those are conflicts. Those are conflicts within us. And we want to let go of those conflicts in this breathe. So this is a breathe for world peace, but you could say it's a breathe for inner peace, for the peace within myself, which means I have to take responsibility to let go of those inner conflicts, right? And that's how we dissolve the outer conflicts. So if we've got, okay, we've got uh, almost 70 people with us here today. If 70 of us come to inner peace, 
and we send out that energy in our breathe that can contribute to world peace. So that's that's just how it works. You have to work within, out, inside, out, right? Inside, out. So find that peace within yourself and extend that out. Give up your judgments, give up your conflicts, give up your grievances, give up your attack thoughts. And that's what we do to promote world peace. And that's an inside job and it's an individual job. It'll happen in every individual. So that's, we want to make that really clear about this breathe. So Sandra Ray, you had a few things to say. Oh yeah, first of all, welcome everyone. I'm glad you're here. And uh, you know, I like everyone else became a bit obsessed with the news when this all happened. And over the last week, I've stopped listening to the news completely. Uh, and that's helped me a lot. So, you know, I think listening to the news is kind of an addiction. And if you watch all that, you get activated, you get more afraid. So what I'm doing is I'm not looking at the news right now, not even the headlines, which is a big step for me. So that's helped me feel better. And um, I can feel more relaxed and safe when I'm not indulging in that negativity. So I recommend you consider that. Well, let's talk about what to do now. If the thing turns into a really worse mess, looks like it will, people predict World War III, et cetera. We're gonna to have to be as close to the masters as possible. So I really recommend you do link up to the dream team. Those of you who are new, we call the dream team our guys, which is Babaji, Jesus, the Divine Mother. We have altars in every room to them. And I really recommend that you tune into the masters so you feel safe. <laughs> and, you know, and we are going to India in the spring, so. <laughs> yeah, I wanna also say this is not to the exclusion of the Judaic masters and the Islamic masters. Right. There were many great enlightened souls from those lineages and those, those may be your lineages. And I'm sure you can find guidance within those enlightened beings within your lineage. Yeah. You know, so we're not we're not saying the dream team is excluding that. Right. In Thank fact, you. Um, you know, when I studied for 17 years with Tara Singh, he had a prayer room and within the prayer room, he had about, oh, a couple dozen holy beings, holy masters from all lineages around the world. He had, you know, the Vedic masters. He had uh, the Christian masters, he even had uh, uh calligraphy of Allah, because in in Islam, they don't present pictures of of holy beings. They only they only have calligraphy. So he had Allah up there um, and he represented all all faiths, mm. you know, so that's kind of what we're about. There's there's holiness in every path and we have to find that sweet path down the center mm. where we're not excluding others. And we're not saying ours is the only path. There are many paths to God, and we just have chosen breath work and these these holy masters. But you could have your own, and you could also have them on your altar as solace and guidance. And we're not exclusive in any way in that bit. Yeah. In fact, we're we're going to the Middle East now, and I'm trying to learn as much as I can about Islam and and. Uh, also, I'm kind of grilling all my Jewish friends to get as much information I can from them. So we're trying to go there and be be open, you know, be open, be loving, be not judgmental, be caring and and, you know, take care of those who need our help. Yeah. So uh, we recommend whatever your spiritual practice is and your spiritual life, you get much stronger, really get to it get very strong in your spiritual path so that you help you will feel safe during these traumas now of course babaji recommended that we chant the name of god which uh, in hindi is om namah shivaya and he said god's name is the most powerful sound in creation it's stronger than anything created by man in fact he said it's more powerful than the bomb so if you have fear and so on, you should get up in the morning and do 10 rounds of Om Namah Shivaya on your mala beads. And uh, 
that's the real thing to do right now. Um, so the meaning is I bow down to the Supreme, or you could say to Shiva, and Shiva is the destroyer of ignorance. And what's good about the mantra is it clears your fears at the same time it empowers your positive thoughts. So it clears your negativity and empowers your positive thoughts. I don't know anything else that can do that. So it's a very powerful healing mantra, Namah Shivaya, and we're going to be playing a lot of it when you breathe. So it's beneficial to all your physical ailments, your mental ailments. It, it's good for stress and uncertainty and fear, and it gives you liberation from the birth death cycle, and it brings tremendous liberation and transformation. And you get a sweetness and a peace by doing that. Uh, and you get closer to God. Now, when you're closer to God, no matter what religion, you're going to feel safer. So that's why we recommend you do the mantra. And uh, it's really the way to get control of your mind. And Yeah, and I want to say this getting closer to God. Um, God is as close as your own breath, you guys. Like, so God is inside. I mean, yes, God is out there and in the cosmos and everywhere omnipresent, but our experience of God has to start inside, right? So so that's where we're, when we do the breathing, it's like, just just imagine you're breathing in, you're breathing this energy in, this divine energy, prana, you know, uh, your breath is the most essential element. You could live without food for a couple of weeks. You could live without water for a few days but you can't live without air for more than like three or four minutes. So, so it's the most essential element and it's also got this energy in it. And that's what we're trying to tap into with breath work, with liberation breathing. We're trying to tap into this, this primordial life force and that energy and that energy can come in and cleanse us, heal us, give us insight, give us energy, give us um, whatever it is we need. So so it's not just uh, we're sitting around breathing casually. No, we're, we're connecting with that life force. We're connecting with that divine energy that's that we're taking in more of it. You know, we're with doing this kind of connected, deep, conscious breathing or taking in a lot more energy mm. so and that's that's like infusing ourselves with kind of a a, a divine infusion so you guys, I'm recommending you don't go out of the house without your mala beads. You know, wherever, have them in your pocket or your purse at all times. You never know when there could be some crisis in front of you or whatever. And you can sit on the bus, wear a taxi or the Uber and just do Om Namah Shivaya 108 times. So please remember what I'm saying. Don't go out of the house without your mala beads. <laughs> it's going to help you in the coming times. Now, the other thing is, um, I want to talk about this before we breathe, the Divine Mother, okay? When 9-11 happened, okay, now Israel has their own 9-11, but when 9-11 happened, I had been in seclusion because of my mother's death, and I knew I had to come out now and help people. So I wrote to all different masters of different lineages, different spiritual teachers that I could, and I said, what do we do? And the best answer I got was from this man, Tom Kenyon, who does spiritual healing through sound. And he wrote back and he said to me, the only hope now is the Divine Mother. And then he wrote a prayer to the Divine Mother. And I really believe that. We have got to emphasize the feminine aspect of God. And the Divine Mother is the original spark of creation, is a feminine aspect. And in India, they say, there is nothing higher than worship of the Divine Mother. So if you want to be in a high frequency where you're immune to all these dangers out there, I really recommend you have an altar to the Divine Mother. You start doing the prayers to the Divine Mother. We have 108 names. We always do if you want to get them from us. And you really focus on the Divine Mother energy, which will help this 
intense patriarchal insanity, right? So uh, also there was a guru that said that the final stage of perfection in a soul is surrender to the Divine Mother. Okay. Sri Aurobindo. Yeah, Sri Aurobindo. Right. So, uh, and then in India, that's what they say. That's the highest thing. Now, that's why we go every year to the Divine Mother Festival in Harakon. Now, we just got back last week from the Fall Navaratri, which is the Divine Mother Festival here in Colorado at the ashram. So we're pretty charged up, by the way. And we're bringing you guys that energy where we do fire ceremonies every day and worship to the Divine Mother. So we're pretty charged up from that wonderful experience. So I would like to say something about the Divine Mother. Um, it's, it's not just this, you know, Hindu deity with eight arms, uh, blah, blah, blah. The Divine Mother is a manifestation of creation. Like, I, I like to put it, keep it really simple. Like, there's the Divine Creator, which really doesn't have a gender at all. It's just, it's just like, you, you can just call that love, right? And then there's the first action, and that's spirit. And that's like the Father. It's unmanifested. It's just, it's just pure energy that hasn't taken form but it's starting to take idea right it's starting starting to formulate a thought right that's the spirit and then when it manifests that's the divine mother like you have to have a, a thought of a table or a design of a table before you can have a table well the design the thought the the spiritual reality of that that's the father and then when it takes shape, that's the mother. It's been birthed into physical form. So everything in the cosmos, all the sun, the moon, the stars, the planets, the galaxies, the like billion of galaxies that each have billions of stars, that's all the Divine Mother. So that's all it is. It's not some, some religious belief system. It's just, it's a reality of manifestation, right? First, it has to happen. It has love has to make the idea, and the idea is a spiritual entity. And then, when it comes and it manifests, it's now it's now a physical entity. So it's like divine creator, father, mother, then child. That would be us. That would be the individual creations, like Sandra, Marcus, you guys. Okay, that's the child and that they all four work together and it's a unity and it's not a religion it's not a belief system it's just the way things are set up you know so when we pray to the divine mother we're praying for all creation all manifestation and this this doesn't have divisions it doesn't have like americans and chinese and jewish people and Arab people, it doesn't have those divisions. It's just all one creation. And that's that's where we have to find our peace. So yeah, if I were you, I recommend you start surrendering to the Divine Mother and that would really help yourself and that would help the world. And this is why we take people to India every spring because we go to the Divine Mother Festival, which is nine straight days of worship to the Divine Mother. And Babaji said it's so powerful with those particular ancient ceremonies, those particular yogis and saints and those particular processes that, it, you know, one day is like 12 years of progress. That's how powerful it is. So you can make 12 years of spiritual progress in one day if you go there. So it's really worth it. And we hope you'll come with us. And I think now we're going to have to link up to the Divine Mother if we want to be saved from all this stuff going on. Okay, so when you lie down, I am going to, I wrote a prayer this morning to the Divine Mother. I'll read to you when we start reading, and then I'm going to breathe with you today, and we're going to put on uh, Goma, Babaji's uh, musicians from England. They've given us special privilege to play this for you, and this particular one has a lot of Om Namah Shivaya in it. That's why I'm choosing that one. Yeah. Okay. So, so I think now is good time. You can all get your place and get light lying down. 
Your, your pillow doesn't want to be too high. You want kind of your spine to be as straight as possible. You can use a pillow, but not a, you don't want your neck cocked way up. You want it kind of straight, okay? So, and get comfortable, hands to your side. Uh, you might need a blanket because sometimes you can get cold. So you might want to have a blanket nearby. And then uh, we're going to start soon and Sandra's going to read this prayer and then uh, we're going to put on the mantras. Now, I want to say a little bit about mantra breathing. So liberation breathing is what we're calling rebirthing now in our in our network. And it's it's strictly the original rebirthing, processing people on their five biggies and doing this this connected breathing through the mouth, just like it was always when Leonard Orr and Sandra Ray started rebirthing in the world. It's just like that. But now we've introduced mantra breathing where we're breathing for a whole hour to these very powerful mantras there. And mantras are like divine sounds, right? They're divine words, they're divine sounds, their energy, just like your breath is a divine energy coming into you. These sounds are divine energy coming into you and they help you. They help you let go. You don't even have to understand what they're saying. Just trust that they're very high thoughts. Praises to God. <laughs> Praises, Praises to, to God. God. The and they're keeping you safe. They're infusing you with energy and they're solving your problems. Just turn your problems over to the breath and to the mantra and you would be amazed people are having miraculous shifts in health and family matters and financial matters just by coming to these mantra breathes now we do them every saturday um, at one o'clock eastern usa time so you're welcome to come but you also have to register for those it's on the website so um, I'll be sending out, you know, I put most of you who have signed up for this, I put you on our mailing list. So you'll get be getting mailings about mantra breathing. So we, we invite you to come. That's every Saturday. And we hope you'll take advantage of that. But this is our first of, of many free breathes for world peace. I think we're going to do one a month for a while. So this is our November breathe um we'll be we'll be in bali in december and we'll have another one but uh stay tuned for that oh and by the way you can all come with us on the bali quest you can still make it if you're inclined okay. yeah we'll have announcements at the end okay so i think that's that's everything getting you ready so sandra's going to read this prayer yeah and for you new people don't worry about anything the mantra itself will keep you safe so you don't, and if you feel like too much energy, you slow down and relax. And if you feel pain in your body, it's always a negative thought you're clinging to. All pain is the effort involved in clinging to a negative thought. So if you have any pain, you have to say, okay, the negative thought that's causing my pain is, and you listen for the answer, then you change that thought and the pain will go away. So the great thing about mantra breathing is it makes everybody feel really safe for group sessions. And, you know, when we started with the pandemic, I thought, oh my God, well, we have to do group rebirthings and we can't go around like we used to and check on everybody and what are we going to do? And then Babaji gave me the instruction, play the mantras and everybody will feel safe. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Later. Okay. All right, so now that you're lying down, I just wrote this prayer this morning to the Divine Mother, and you can all start breathing, pulling on the inhale, relaxing on the exhale, inhale love, exhale fear, inhale life, exhale death, inhale the good, exhale the negative thoughts, inhale peace, Exhale any anger if you're angry about anything that keeps you from being in peace. So we in the breathwork community, we must set an example of how to be at peace and have no anger. Okay. Divine Mother, 
Saturate my entire being with your presence. Love, joy, and peace. Saturate my entire being with your presence, love, joy, and peace. Give me insight into ways you desire to work in and through me for your glory. How can I serve you, Divine Mother, in this time of trial in the world? How can I serve you? Let people experience your presence through the words that I speak and the actions that I take. Let your miraculous power flow through me. I make myself available to you completely. I step out in your power and authority. I am ready to go forth in your power and purpose to help and transform the world around me through your glorious presence. May I always walk in obedience to your will. Okay, I'm going to read it one more time. Breathe a little deeper. Divine Mother, saturate my entire being with your presence, your love, your joy, and your peace. Give me insight into ways you desire to work in me and through me for your glory. Let people experience your presence through the words that I speak and the actions that I take. Let your miraculous power flow through me. I make myself available to you completely. I step out in your power and authority. I am ready to go forth in your power and purpose to help transform the world around me through your glorious presence. May I always walk in obedience to your will. Jay Mock.